Just as we told you would happen, things are heating up dramatically ahead of the board vote decision for the Walt Disney Company. With days left before Nelson Peltz may take his place on the Disney board, and Bob Iger may be finally bamboozled by the decisions of shareholders, the Walt Disney Company is now facing a major legal issue. Folks, you won't believe the complaints in this. We'll dive in right now. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Pro Channel, where we always are happy to have you. An attitude of gratitude, as always. It is an honor to share our time. Folks, our job here is to explain entertainment, keep you ahead of the culture curve. We intend to do so today. There is a major legal situation for the Walt Disney Company right now that just came to light yesterday. And of course, with all the stuff going on, we have not yet been able to get to it. But don't worry, folks, because will bring a unique perspective you will hear nowhere else analysis like you've never seen. All right, here it is. A letter from America First Legal following up on an EEOC complaint that Disney is dealing with. This is addressed to Bob Iger, and it is titled Notice of Mismanagement, Breach of Fiduciary Duty, and Waste to Mr. Iger and Mr. Parker. It goes on to talk about who America First Legal Foundation, AFL, is. It's not a small outfit. And it goes on to talk about why this matters so much. We, however, will not dive into the beginning here, the premise. For folks, we believe that you all know who Disney is and what Disney has done. We want to relay to you now what's in this ginormous, gigantic uh, legal document. So let's dive down, folks. We've got it highlights, highlighted so we know exactly where to go. Here's the first point that we're going to get to today. Three points in this video that you absolutely have to see that are now percolating to the top of the legal issues that Disney faces after Disney just was defeated by the state of Florida, acquiescing and accepting their trillion-dollar, hundred-year penalty for weighing in on issues of children, bedrooms, uh, state-sponsored curriculum. You get the idea. Disney's reimagined tomorrow. This is straight from the legal document. Uh, folks, as we read this, if you've watched this channel, you will know all of these things. You will be very comfortable uh, just easing in to listening to, finally, large legal entities addressing what we have been talking about for months, if not years. Disney's reimagined tomorrow website is the company's digital destination for Disney's D, E, and I commitments and actions. The website showcases the company's unlawful quotas, rebranded in Orwellian disinformation fashion as diversity and inclusion policies that amplify underrepresented voices and untold stories, as well as championing the importance of accurate representation in media and entertainment. The stated pretext for the company's unlawful conduct is to, quote, to broaden access and diversity in our industry, end quote. Disney has done so by, quote, adopting inclusion standards across Disney general entertainment and live action studio productions by the end of 2022 with the goal of advancing representation in front of and behind the camera in marketing and more, end quote. Disney general entertainment encompasses essentially all content produced across Disney. So the unlawful, according to this document, requirements listed below in Disney's inclusion standards apply company-wide and have been in place for Disney's ABC Entertainment Productions since 2020. As discussed below, the inclusion standards mandate that each production comply with discriminatory employment requirements. Multiple inclusion standards establish discriminatory quotas to ensure members of underrepresented groups fill a certain percentage of Disney jobs. Disney has accordingly unlawfully excluded qualified job candidates on the basis of race, national origin, and sex who could provide enhanced value to the company and its shareholders. These quotas include, folks, here we go. This is Disney. 50% or more of producer and above on writing staff and 50% or more of co-producer and below on writing staff come from underrepresented groups. 50% or more of episodic directors come from underrepresented groups. And folks, when they say that, what does that mean? Well, in my opinion, which seems to still be legal in the United States, at least for now, it means not white dudes. 50% or more of episodic directors are from that same group. Casting director is from an underrepresented group or has not previously worked on DGE show in this role. Meaningful representation of those groups. Promotion of a member of an underrepresented group. Substantial year-over-year -year increase in members of underrepresented groups. 
Disney maintains similar requirements for its below-the-line positions, requiring that at least two of the below five standards must be met. 50% more of line producer, 50% or more of other key roles, 50% or more of the overall crew. Folks, are you seeing what this is? It's nothing but bigotry against white guys. That's it. Everybody else is at least 50% or more. Now, I'm not here to say that anybody should be excluded from anything. And that means that I'm not here to say that white guys should be excluded just because you have an artificial quota that says, hey, more than half the people who work on any given Disney project need to not be white dudes. That's not cool either. But let's scroll down. This is, this is tremendous stuff, folks. Here is the next point, and this is a massive, massive document, as you can see. The company's manufactured misalignment with its traditional customers lacks a rational business purpose and breaches the duties of care, good faith, and loyalty. Again, folks, three points in this video today. We will go into great detail on this document when we get into the special edition of the Pro Show at 5 p.m. on Thursday. That's Eastern time, folks. We'll go all over this. But for this type of video, we can only hit three of these. This is a huge document. There is ample evidence suggesting that management's extreme racial and social agenda has warped the company's decision making. As described below, Disney has repeatedly acted on ideological grounds without a rational business purpose. By turning children's entertainment programming for political and uh, bedroom indoctrination, and by proudly and illegally discriminating based on race, sex, national origin, and or political viewpoint, management has intentionally alienated millions of its American customers. It is patently irrational for Disney to violate non-discrimination laws, destroy corporate goodwill, and use its products and programs as tools of political and social indoctrination. Hmm. Propagandizing kids, you say? We've never talked about that here. It says that Disney describes its Disney Plus streaming surf as primarily offering general entertainment and family programming. However, the Disney Plus catalog includes unnecessarily controversial and politicized content that is demonstratively misaligned with the company's core consumers. Disney Plus profiles in junior mode, a setting designed to only show content that is appropriate for all ages, hides many classic Disney films, but includes controversial content consistent with the company's extreme social and political agenda. For example, the Rise Up Sing Out program features short songs designed to provide an inspiring and empowering message about race, culture, and community, celebrating differences and providing a framework for conversation. It, it contains anti-police and anti-white content. Repeatedly, it shows children creating protest signs with images of black power fists, long a symbol of racial and political uprising. Viewers are told that their skin color is what makes them who they are. The message is a far cry from Martin Luther King Jr.'s vision that children would be judged by their character, not the color of their skin. It goes on to talk about it. Folks, we could go through all this uh, ad nauseum. We could just, ad infinitum, we could discuss uh, the, the Proud family, louder and prouder, and their, uh, the, the, the protests against police officers and all of that. This goes on to list, uh, list Toy Story and the Lightyear film. Uh, Strange World, The Little Mermaid, etc. You all get the idea because you've been here watching this happen. But boy, oh boy, oh boy, do we have something else for you folks. You know what? We'll do a bonus point in a moment. Gina Carano is in this. Can you believe it? In February 2021, Disney fired Gina Carano from the hit Disney Plus show, The Mandalorian, after she expressed her personal political beliefs online. Ms. Carano credibly alleges that she was fired in retaliation for expressing her personal political views opinions and beliefs. On her personal Instagram account, she had posted an image with the text that read, and folks, you know all that. We won't, we won't go into it for the purposes of being on YouTube, but you know all of it, and you could read it. Disney said she had been terminated at her social media posts denigrating people based on their cultural and religious identities were abhorrent and unacceptable. Management publicly misrepresented Ms. Carano's questioning of Democrat Party lockdown policies and her use of historical example as denigrating cultural and religious identities. Wowza, wowza. You know what, folks? Let's do one extra one right here. This is this is bonus time. Everybody ready? Let's type in Last Jedi, and here it is. Folks, take a look at this. This is the kind of stuff you just got to see. Disney's latest installment in the Indiana Jones franchise. This is It's going into the fiduciary responsibility of Disney to create content that is not political. It is not partisan. It's not ideological. It's a fiduciary responsibility because Disney has a responsibility to shareholders, excuse me, to make content 
that is the most broadly appealing possible to drive growth and revenues. Here's what it says. Disney's latest installment in the Indiana Jones franchise also failed to break even. Its female lead equated capitalism to theft in its trailer, which has surpassed 16 million views on YouTube. In early 2023, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania failed to return a profit. And in its opening minutes, had a main character describe police officers firing tear gas at peaceful protesters. Strange World, another animated family film that featured a particular type of relationship subplot, also bombed at the box office, losing more than $100 million. The female co-lead in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness wore a prominent rainbow shirt throughout the entire film. Disney has historically selected directors experienced in helming big-budget blockbusters to helm its Star Wars films. These directors have led other major theatrical films like Star Trek, Thor, Wonder Woman, Lego, and Godzilla. Disney broke from this pattern, giving 2017's Star Wars Episode VIII, The Last Jedi, to director Ryan Johnson, whose biggest film was the science fiction thriller Looper. The Last Jedi divided Star Wars fans and sparked major changes to Disney's Star Wars trilogy. Disney recently tapped Charmin Obeid Chinoy, a Pakistani-Canadian director with minimal feature-length directing experience, to direct an upcoming theatrically released Star Wars film. She will become the first woman to direct a Star Wars film, and her film will also star a woman and play a major role in the franchise's future. Obeid Chinoy is best known for directing feminist documentaries and enjoys making films that, quote, this is from Obeid Chinoy, make men uncomfortable, unquote. Given the revelations of Disney and its inclusion standards, it is likely that Obey Chinoy's race and gender played at least some role in her being tapped to direct the film, and Star Wars fans are worried. Furthermore, in making this decision, it appears that Disney does not intend to earn back consumer support by producing the best quality film that the largest number of consumers will spend money to see. Folks, this is a legal complaint. This is an EEOC follow-up from an organization that is alleging that Disney is screwing around with shareholder money. This is what we talk about. The next paragraph is Snow White. The next paragraph is, is National Geographic. Folks, this is insane that it has finally made it to this point and just before the proxy battle comes to an end for at least one year. Will Nelson Pelt stick around if he doesn't get a board seat? Well, with all that's happened, I, I, I think he might. I, I really do think that he might. And if he sticks around for another year, uh, you can count on trying getting four board seats, not two. Now, what will happen next week? And coverage will begin, folks, by the way, on this channel at 11 a.m. Eastern time of the uh, shareholders meeting, 11 a.m. Eastern time. We will then dire uh, redirect to Valiant Renegade at 1 p.m. for live coverage. You'll have coverage all day long, and we will see what happens with Nelson Peltz, with Tryon and all of this effort. But wowza, when we said things were going to heat up and get spicy ahead of this, this has reached all new levels. Consider that Disney yesterday took that trillion dollar hit. Folks, I'm not gonna explain how it's a trillion dollars. Go watch the video. We did one yesterday. We explained how, that if, if you extrapolate this out, it's a trillion dollar hit. How, how often have you heard a company take a trillion dollar hit? How often have you heard them do that because they wanted to get rid of the old CEO because of his politics? Had to bring back in the old, old CEO who never leaves. Wow gonna be a lot of fun folks we got a lot of news to cover over the next days hope you enjoyed this one america first legal filing this one we'll see how it goes we'll see where uh this winds up folks one place we would like to wind up is with a like from you like share subscribe click it stick it to the algorithms it's the notification bell drop a comment down below let us know your thoughts and as always folks we'll see you real soon keep learning keep growing and keep having fun <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <sighs> I, I just, uh, I put out a tweet of a fat minority with a booger in her nose and I said, This is an empowered woman. <laughs> and Kataka retweeted it. <laughs> uh, you don't have your own ex account, do you? Oh, well, I actually created it a while ago the greatest troll I've pulled off in a long time. Do you know how many things uh, I've secretly tanked? Oh gosh, I hope not. That would make me legally culpable. But uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sweet baby ink. <laughs> huh? Yep. I'm the... <laughs> Shut up. I'm the CEO. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, no, seriously, look, this is my profile picture. <laughs> Everyone's just AI. It's great. I'm so excited to gaslight everyone and see what they're going to like next because they think it's socially obligated. <laughs> Wait. <sighs> so you're... No way. You're yep. the CEO of Sweet Baby Inc. Maybe. But first, you should see the jewelry company I created. <laughs> We're gonna get sued. <laughs> oh. It's a no, yeah, it's gonna be good. <laughs>